Hi to everyone. Today we are going to discuss about types of cell division. Let's get you to the topic. Now first let's see about cell division. What is cell division? This cell division is also called as cell reproduction and also it is called as cell multiplication. So what is going to happen here? Here the parent cell will be there. It will undergo replication to form two daughter cells. Now let's see the definition of the cell division. It is the process of formation of what is going to form here? New cells, new or daughter cells. From where it is going to form? From the pre-existing cells. What do you mean by pre-existing? The cell which is already present. So in this diagram, this cell is already present. So this is called as a pre-existing cells, right? So from the pre-existing cell or it is also called as a parent cell. Fine. Now come to the types of cell division. There are three types. The first thing is amitosis, mitosis and meiosis. Before entering into these three types of division, we have to be very clear with the type of a cell. Fine. Let's take an example of human. There are about 23 pairs of chromosomes. In the 23 pairs, 22 pairs is about somatic cells. Only one pair is about reproductive cell. This reproductive cell is called as a haploid cell, which is denoted as N. Now let's see about what is haploid. This haploid cell consists of only one set of chromosomes. It will be like this. Let me change the color. This is one and this is one. Okay. Here there is only one set of chromosome. Only one set of chromosome. Fine. So how it is formed? It is formed after meiosis, which is nothing but it's a type of cell division. We are going to look into that. Fine. Then it is not genetically identical. It is not genetically identical to what? To the parent. Why it is not genetically identical to the parent? Because in the haploid cells, crossing over is going to take place. Just you, you just remember only crossing over. We are going to see crossing over in detail in the meiosis. Okay? I'll tell about it later. And the fourth point is that where it is found? It is found in gametes. This gametes is also called as a sex cells. Fine. So this haploid cells play a very important role in what? As it is a gametes, it will play, play a very important role in the sexual reproduction. Yes, this is all about haploid cells. Now this somatic cells is called as a diploid cells, which is denoted as 2N. It's quite opposite to the haploid. It consists of two set of chromosomes like... This is one, this is the second. So now it consists of two chromosomes, right? In one set, what do you mean by set? Two chromosomes are present. Yes. So the second thing, it is formed after mitosis. So we have seen this mitosis in our previous video. Those who haven't gone through that, I'll give the link in the description box. Just check out it. And then this diploid cells are genetically identical. Why it is genetically identical? Because crossing over does not going to take place in the diploid cells. Then where it is found? It is found in the somatic cells, right? Yes. Found in sorry, somatic cells. Fine. And then the somatic cells will play a very important role in the growth and also development of the living organisms. This diploid cells is also called as a homologous. Homo, what do you mean by homo? Which is same, okay? So these pair of chromosomes are identical, okay? So that's why we are calling this as a, this diploid cells as a homologous. This haploid cells is also called as non-homologous or it is called as a heterologous. Fine. Now let's get into the Amitosis. So first of all, we have to be very clear with the names. If we understand the names, we can find the process. Fine. Here this is amitosis. We know about mitosis. Amitosis in the sense absence of mitosis. 
the things what are the things is going to happen in the mitosis is not going to happen in the a mitosis fine this a mitosis is also called as a direct cell division and it is also called as a incipient cell division now the first point about a mitosis it is a very simple type of cell division because it's going to happen very simply the things which is going to happen in the mitosis uh, production of the spindle fibers and uh, condensation of the chromosome and uh, nuclear membrane disappearance nothing is going to happen in the a mitosis let's see one by one so the second point is about there won't be synthesis of spindle fiber so in the mitosis we have this uh, spindle fiber which is formed by the uh, centrioles right it is used to separate the chromosome so now here this is not going to happen and then no condensation of chromatin so in the cell cycle in the gap 2 phase the chromosome will be like this when it is entering at the end of the g2 phase this chromosome will get condensed what do you mean by condensed it will come very closely it will form like a coil like structure that is called condensation so finally it will be looking like this this is not going to happen here fine coming to the fourth point there is no disappearance of nuclear membrane in the mitosis there are four phases right prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase so first of all in the prophase the first thing there will be the disappearance of nuclear membrane it is also not going to happen in the a mitosis fine coming to the occurrence where this a mitosis is going to happen okay what are the cells will undergo a mitosis prokaryotes will also undergo a mitosis prokaryotes like uh, bacteria cyanobacteria which is nothing but blue green algae and also yeast and some eukaryotes will also undergo a mitosis eukaryotes like amoeba and cartilage cells and fetal membrane cells so these are the uh, cells which will undergo a mitosis yes coming to the mechanism there are two steps the first thing is karyokinesis so as if already told you have to be very clear with the names so we can get the meaning from the name itself karyo means nucleus and kinesis in the sense division so division of nucleus the second point here the nucleus will uh, develop a separation or also, it is also called as a constriction in center what do you mean by constriction narrowing fine nucleus develops a constriction in center and then it the nucleus will become like a dumbbell shape what do you mean by dumbbell shape so it will be like this fine so nucleus become dumbbell shape and finally this constriction will get deepens to divide divide the nucleus into two constriction deepens and divide into two so this is all about karyokinesis there is one more step which is called as a cytokinesis so what do i mean by cytokinesis come on yes it is a division of cytoplasm so in the cytoplasm is going to divide here the plasma membrane plays a very important role here the constriction will be started by the plasma membrane okay this plasma membrane develop constriction along nuclear constriction it deepens centripetally what do you mean by centripetally so it is the direction towards the center it is called as a centripetal okay so finally it divides the cell into two so this is all about cytokinesis now let's see the diagrammatic representation of this a mitosis fine so let's consider this is the cell and uh, here is the nucleus inside the nucleus that is a centriole so this is the plasma membrane this is cytoplasm and this is nucleus inside the nucleus nucleolus is present now it is going to undergo a mitosis first of all there will be the constriction happening inside the nucleus at the same time there will also be the constriction in the plasma membrane so this is one constriction and this is one constriction now the nucleus will form a dumbbell shape so it will be like this okay so here the nucleus is dumbbell shape finally 
this will be divided into two. So these are the two daughter cells. Coming to the drawbacks, uh, because of this amitosis, the distribution of chromosome will be unequal, which may lead to the uh, abnormalities in the metabolism, which is nothing but in the biochemical activities. So there will be the unequal distribution of chromosome. So if the chromosome is not distributed equally, obviously there may be some abnormalities. Let's get enter into the mitosis. So this mitosis is also called as a M phase. So this M phase consists of four subphases, which is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and finally telophase. We have already seen in this our last session. Today we are going to discuss about types of mitosis. So there are a number of types. So the first thing is an astral mitosis. Here, asters is there. An astral. What do you mean by an astral? Absence or lacking. So what is going to lack here? Asters is going to lack here. So there won't be the formation of asters. First point about an astral mitosis is it is found in plants. There won't be any aster formation, but there will be the formation of spindle fiber. Spindle is formed, but no centriole or aster is observed. Here, this what is the function of the spindle fiber? We have already seen this in the mitosis, right? It is going to separate the chromosome. Same thing is going to happen here. The spindle fiber equally divide the chromosome. Fine. The next type of mitosis is ampiastral mitosis. What do you mean by ampi? Ampi means both. Okay. So, it is normally like asters is going to form in both the sides, which means poles. First point, it is found in animals. And then, the spindle fiber is going to form two asters, one at each pole. Coming to the intranuclear mitosis, this intranuclear mitosis is also called as a promitosis. What do you mean by intra? Intra means inside. Inside. It is a very interesting thing because uh, in the mitosis, we have seen that in the prophase, the nuclear membrane is going to disappear, right? Here, the nuclear membrane is not going to disappear. Fine. So, here the first point, it is found in amoeba and also in yeast. There won't be any aster formation and the spindle fiber will be formed inside the nuclear membrane because nuclear membrane is not going to disappear here. Coming to the extranuclear mitosis, this extranuclear mitosis is also called as a eumitosis. Extra means outside. Fine. So the first thing, it is found in plants and also animals. Okay. It's quite normal. It's a nuclear membrane is going to disappear here. Well, right it as nuclear membrane is lost. Okay. Obviously, the spindle fiber is formed outside the nuclear membrane. Fine. The next thing is endomitosis. Endo means within. So it is found in animals. What is going to happen here now? So there will be the duplication. Okay. But this duplication have to be separated with the help of the spindle fiber. Right. That is not going to happen here. So there won't be the separation of the chromosome which leads to the polyploidy. Chromosome fails to separate. So this will lead to polyploid. What do you mean by polyploid? So when a, a chromosome contains more than a set of uh, chromosome that is called as a polyploid. So the example for this polyploid is liver of man. Okay. Fine. Coming to the free nuclear mitosis. Yes, free nuclear. Okay. This nucleus is going to keep on separating. So that's why it is known as a free nuclear mitosis. So it is going to happen in rhizopus which is fungi and upelina which is a protozoan and it is also found in liquid endosperm in coconut. So these are some examples of the uh, free nuclear mitosis. Okay. So the main thing there won't be cytokinesis occurs. Only the karyokinesis is going to happen. Okay. So when this uh, nucleus is keep, keep on separating, it will lead to multinucleated, right? If there is a large number of 
nucleus it is called as a multinucleated this condition is known as a coenocytic condition so this will undergo repeated karyokinesis so that's why we are calling it as a free nuclear mitosis so this will leads to multinucleate this is known as a coenocytic condition so yeah this is all about types of mitosis uh, in the next session we are going to see about meiosis in detail thank you hi to all coming back to the types of cell division we have discussed about three types that is a mitosis mitosis in our previous session here we are going to discuss about meiosis let's get into the topic yes coming to the meiosis it is one of the special type of division because the double division is going to happen here that is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 is going to happen this is also called as reductional division because we know that this meiosis will take place in the diploid cells which is represented as 2n this will undergo division to form four haploid cells which is denoted as n here the number of cells is get increased from one diploid cell and we are getting four haploid cells but the chromosome is get reduced okay so that's why we are calling this as a reductional division so before entering into the meiosis the cell will undergo i phase right we have already seen that in the mitosis so the i phase is also called as interphase which consists of g1 yes and g2 so after the g2 phase the cell will undergo meiosis so the thing is interphase occurs prior to meiosis fine coming to the essential features of meiosis so as this is a double division there will be the two successive divisions but there won't be any dna replication because the dna gets duplicated in the yes phase itself right and here the interesting thing is crossing over and formation of chiasmata is going to happen we are going to see this in detail here and then finally obviously there are going to be the separation of chromatids after the crossing over fine now let's see the parts of meiosis coming to the parts there are two types that is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 this meiosis 1 is also called as heterotypic or it is called as a reduction division so this meiosis 1 is one of the uh, complex and also longest division here the two sister chromatids will become genetically different because of the crossing over right and also there will be the reduction number of chromosome the number of chromosomes will get reduced into half okay so here meiosis also there are two parts that is karyokinesis and cytokinesis so this karyokinesis consists of prophase 1 this prophase 1 has five subphases that is leptonema or leptotene and zygotene patch team diploteme diakinesis coming back to this metaphase 1 anaphase 1 and telophase 1 coming to the meiosis 2 this is called as homotypic and also it is called as a equational division because here the number of chromosome remains same it is not going to change so that's why it is called as a equational division again and also the chromatids get separated it is also has two parts that is karyokinesis and cytokinesis here prophase 2 metaphase 2 anaphase 2 and telophase 2. so we are going to see one by one in detail coming to the prophase 1 the first subphase is leptotene or it is also called as leptonema or thin thread stage okay so the first thing is that will be the formation of asters right so the centriole is going to get separated it is going to at each poles so from that centriole there will be a star like structure called asters is going to form fine then there will be the condensation of nuclear chromatin so what do you mean by condensation so the chromosome consists of dna that dna will get come close to each other okay that is called as a condensation let me draw the structure here we are going to concentrate only inside the nucleus so that's why i'm going to draw this nucleus that will be big and this is the nuclear membrane okay so here the centriole is present it is going to form a star like structure called asters fine and there will be the condensation of nuclear chromatin let me change the color for the chromatin i'm going to draw four chromosomes so which is a thin thread like structure right 
that is called chromatins yes so here let me draw this uh, chromatin here yes so it will start condensing like this okay it is going to come near to each other here you can find the small bead like structure right that is called as a chromomers okay so this too is called as a cystochromatids this cystochromatids still appear single okay we can't see this duplicated chromatids okay because of the nucleoprotein fiber between this chromatids okay so it is a protein going to present between the sister chromatids so i'm going to represent this chromatids like this okay you cannot see the separation between the sister chromatids because of the nucleoprotein present between them right then this lactotin is also called as a bouquet stage so why we are calling this as a bouquet stage because the chromatids is remain attached in the nuclear membrane which resembles like a bouquet okay so that's why it is called as a bouquet stage so that's all about this leptotin let's enter into the zygotin the zygotin is also called as zygonema and also yolk thread stage so the first thing is pairing of homologous chromosome is going to take place which is called as synapse okay and obviously they are going to be the condensation and moving away of asters and here synaptonemal complex is going to be formed what do you mean by synaptonemal complex which is nothing but the two sister chromatids is remains attached with a nuclear protein right so that forms a complex called synaptonemal complex now let me draw the chromosome first yes now here the pairing is going to happen so this is a homologous chromosome here the pairing is taken place okay so this chromosome is from the parental and this is from the parent okay which is from father and mother fine so there will be the synaptonemal complex okay so there is a bond is a bond like structure between the two chromosomes two homologous chromosome is called as a synaptonemal complex yes let me write here synaptonemal complex yes and also there will be the condensation we know that and also the asters will be moving okay it have to be at the poles right so that's why it is moving so the next thing is pachytin phase so this pachytin is also called as pachynema and it is also called as thick thread stage here the crossing over going to takes place which means exchange of genes okay let me draw the chromosome yes now the genes get transferred you know let me draw one okay now this both homologous chromosomes get attached for the exchange of genes this is called as crossing over fine so this crossing over actually it is a enzymatically controlled process by an enzyme called recombinase enzyme it is called as a recombinase enzyme so what do you mean by crossing over the process of exchange of genes by two non sister chromatids is called crossing over what do you mean by non sister chromatids and sister chromatids actually this chromosome is here right this light green color this is a sister chromatid and this is also a sister chromatid but it is getting combined right for the crossing over this two both is called as a non sister chromatids right so this chromatid is from one of the chromosome and this chromatid is from another chromosome so, so that's why it is called as a non sister chromatids let me draw here clearly the chromosomes yes this is one of the chromosome fine so here what happens you know this will get attached with this and this will get attached with this fine for the crossing over at the end of the 
क्रॉसिंग होगा the gene get transferred okay so what happens here the genes from this chromosome has transferred here and the genes from this chromosome has transferred here this is called as a crossing over fine so this is called bivalent you know this whole thing is called as a bivalent which is also called as dyad now it gets combined right so it is called as a tetrad fine yes so we know about crossing over and also it is an enzymatically controlled process with the help of the recombinant enzyme and obviously they are going to be the moving of asters to the poles now let's enter into the diplotene stage so here this diplotene is stage is also called as diptonema and also it is called as a double thread stage so what happens here the nuclear membrane start disappearing yeah so the nuclear membrane start disappearing fine and then there will be the d synapses occurs what do you mean by synapses that two homologous chromosomes will come in contact with each other right so that complex that is nematonemal complex is going to get break or dissoluted fine let me draw the chromosomes first just making this randomly actually crossing over is done okay but here in this complex there is a place in which the chromosome still get attached right that is called as a chiasmata okay the place in which crossing over takes place in the homologous chromosome is called as a chiasmata so here this chiasmata will start moving towards the end okay if the crossing over is happened here it is going to move towards the end this is the end fine so these are the three things is going to happen in the diplotene stage coming to the diakinesis in the diplotene stage the chiasmata started moving towards the end right so that end will be detached that is called as a termination okay so here the termination is completed by the chiasmata and there will be the complete disappearance of the nuclear membrane and also there will be the formation of spindle fiber so why the spindle fiber is formed to separate the chromatids right this is all about prophase 1 we can discuss the remaining in our next session